fantasy for you, for you, for you, for you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ryan, and welcome to Castle Tree TV. This week on the show, I'm going to be creating a shadow box diorama for a Warhammer miniature model that I'm going to be painting and assembling. Warhammer is a miniature tabletop war game that simulates battles between armies using miniature figurine models that most everyone in the hobby calls minis, minis, minis. I'm going to be building and painting a model from the Warhammer Age of Sigmar edition. This is the fantasy version of Warhammer. Building and painting these minis is as big a part of this hobby as actually playing the game itself. Some people just build, paint, and collect and never even actually play the game at all. There are mini painting contests all over the world where professionals and dedicated hobbyists submit their works and win prizes and most of all, prestige within the community. The main goals in the painting aspect of this hobby are creativity and perfection. You need to be an extremely detail-oriented person to achieve greatness in the mini painting world. And it takes time to become a master. Once you see how small some of these minis can be and how detailed they actually are, you understand why it takes such a great skill and practice to achieve something worthy of a gold medal. Now, I'm probably not gonna be winning any awards with the mini I'm about to paint because this will be my first time ever painting a mini. But we're gonna change all of that today. And I'm hoping that my background in art will give me a leg up as a beginner. But my main goal here is to show other people who are interested in this hobby that there are other beginners out there. And hopefully I can teach you something through my potential successes and failures. Now there's a ton of different wargaming worlds out there that you can dive into. And there are millions of minis that you can paint. I chose Warhammer Age of Sigmar for the fantasy aspect. And I also really like the lore behind the armies. Now there's a lot of armies you can choose from in Age of Sigmar, and there's a ton of different minis within each of those armies. I chose the Skaven army. They are fiendish rat creatures who desire nothing more than chaos and destruction. Once we've finished painting our Skaven Storm Fiend Mini, our Ska that is a mouthful. Skaven Storm Fiend Mini, Skaven Storm Fiend Mini, Skaven Storm. Once we've finished painting our Skaven Storm Fiend Mini, I'm gonna create a diorama world that would be fit for a sewer dwelling scum like a Skaven rat. Okay, to set the scene for this week's episode, Maestro has volunteered to read some of the lore from the Skaven Battle Tone. Let's go see what he's got prepared for us. And now a little light reading from the Warhammer Age of Sigmar, Skaven Chaos Battle Tome. Just let me put on my reading glasses. Since when do you wear reading glasses? Can you please take this seriously? I am taking it seriously. You want me to do this or not? You're drunk, aren't you? I'm not drunk. I had some grape juice this morning. Red wine is not grape juice, man. Yes, it is. It's the juice from a grape. Fermented. It's juice. Do you want me to do this? I don't need to do this. Please. Then leave me alone. Thank you. <clears throat> Where were we? The Skaven Battle Tome. <laughs> first warning is the scrabbling of a million claws and the skin crawling susurrus of thousands of furry bodies squirming over and around one another. The sound carries up from the dark and noisome depths, mingling with a verminous reek that grows thicker and more cloying by the moment. Warriors eye one another nervously, gritting their teeth and trying not to edge back as the distant rushing grows to a skittering roar. Squealing war cries and spite-filled shrieks echo on the air. Countless red and staring eyes flash in the gloom 
and torchlight glints upon the chisel fangs and rusted blades. Then the Skaven crash headlong into their enemies and sweep them away in a frenzy of horror and blood. There you go, that's a guaranteed million views right there. Now leave me alone, I'm gonna go drink some more grape juice. Okay, so for part one, we're gonna begin unboxing the Skaven Stormfiend pieces and cutting them off of the sprue. And to do that, we're gonna need some tools. Now you can buy all of these pieces individually, or you can just do like I did and buy a hobby kit. Hobby kits are pretty cheap. They come with assorted files, and X-Acto knife and sprue clippers. Okay, let's crack open the box and see what we have inside. Anyone who's interested in purchasing the Skaven Stormfiend mini set, it's gonna run you about 65 bucks. Now inside the box, you're gonna find Three sprues, complete with all the pieces you need to build each of your Skaven Storm Fiends. You're also going to find these assorted bases you can choose from. And the instructions on how to assemble each of the Storm Fiends. And each one has a different variation of weapon system you can choose from. Now when you're clipping the pieces off of the sprue, you want to make sure you get close to the piece, but not too close so that you damage the detail. And you don't have to be overly careful, just be mindful of where you're cutting. Now once you've cut them off of the sprue, we're going to go back with the X-Acto knife and some files and clean up our cut lines and some of the mold lines. This is just gonna make it look cleaner and it's also gonna make it easier to assemble when it's time to glue. Okay, our pieces are ready to be glued. And to do that, I'm gonna be using the Instacure Plus gap filling medium from Tower of Games in Virginia Beach. I highly recommend going to your local game store to get advice if you're new to the game like I am. I went to Tower of Games and spoke with some people about minis, painting, assembly, and the whole hobby in general, and they were really cool and gave me a lot of good advice. So I highly recommend you do the same. And if you're not in my area, you can check them out online. They have an online store and they also have a YouTube channel. Now as you can see, some of these pieces are really small, so make sure you have some tweezers handy. And when you're applying your glue, make sure you don't add too much because this will cause pooling and it will seep out the sides and you'll get a nasty look that you don't want. It's also good to remember that this glue dries really quickly, so maybe give it a test run before you add the glue to see how the pieces are gonna fit together. That way, it won't dry too quickly and you won't make a mess with the glue and ruin some of these fine details in your model. Okay, now that our Skaven Storm Fiend is fully assembled, we're gonna attach a little base or handle to the bottom so that it'll make it easier for me to handle him while I'm painting him and moving him around without getting my hands in the mix and damaging the piece. And I'm gonna do that by adding this double-sided tape to the top of this spray paint can lid. Now they make special handles just for this, but there's really no point if you can just make one yourself and save the money. This works perfectly, and it's gonna create a little riser for us if we wanna attach it to the can, which is gonna help us for the next process, which is spray painting. We're gonna prime the Storm Fiend, and to do that, we're gonna use this Rust-Oleum Ultra Cover primer paint and I'm going to be using a flat finish. I recommend you use a flat finish because it will allow your paint to stick a little bit better. Make sure you shake your spray paint obviously and when you're spraying your Storm Fiend don't shoot too closely and don't shoot for too long. Little bursts far enough away to cover but not too close 
so that you're pulling and distorting those fine details. Next, I'm gonna try another technique where you spray slightly from above to sort of mimic a light source with a lighter color. I used this Vallejo hobby paint, sort of sandy brown color. I'm not sure if it's gonna work. I saw someone else do it and it looked pretty cool, so I'm gonna give it a shot. Okay, now that we have finished assembling and priming this little Skate and Storm V Mini, we're gonna start to add some paint. And I'm gonna show you some of the paint that I'm gonna be using and some of the tools that I'm gonna be using to help me have a more successful experience. Let's go take a look. This is a tool that I've found to be extremely helpful and I highly recommend. The wet palette, which is pretty self-explanatory, is basically a palette that gives you continuous moisture. This allows you to keep your paints from drying up too quickly because hobby paints do dry relatively fast when compared to other paints. And to create this effect, you're gonna take this sponge and fully submerge it in water. And you can always add more water later if you decide that your wet palette isn't as wet as you would like. Now you're gonna take that sponge and put it at the bottom of the sealable wet palette container. You're then gonna take this wet palette paper, which basically has the same consistency as tracing paper, and put it on top of the wet sponge. Iron it out and try to get the creases out so that you don't allow the paint to pull up in weird areas, and it'll just create a more smooth workspace for you. Next, you're gonna begin selecting your paints, and this part can start to feel a little bit overwhelming because there is so much different paint on the market and each company has magic paints that they claim can do things others can't, and you're gonna have to decide which one you think is gonna work best for the effect you're looking for. I chose some paints from Citadel and Vallejo, two pretty big names in the hobby world, and I chose some different types of paints to help me achieve different effects. If you're a beginner like me, I highly suggest that you do what I did and put in the time and do the research and learn more about painting and what the paints do. This is really gonna help you skip some steps and you're gonna get better results by doing this. I watched a lot of videos from the Miniac on YouTube. He's a great teacher, his videos are really informative, he's also really entertaining and he really loves what he's doing and he creates this super inclusive feel that makes you wanna be more a part of it. Go check out his stuff, you're really gonna like it. First, we're gonna begin layering on the paint for his skin. And we're gonna do the skin first because A, there's a lot of it, and B, because it's underneath everything else. We're gonna have to get a little bit messy, and any paint that we get on anything else can be covered later with that color. While those deeper areas of skin dry, I'm gonna move on to the armor and cover it with this silverish white color that I created to give more of a muted metal effect. For his grinder fist weapons, I went with this yellowish green color that I mixed together. And once I've got all the layers on for this, I'm gonna go back with a contrast or a wash and let it fall into the recesses so that they have a little bit more depth. And now I'm gonna begin dry brushing in certain areas. Dry brushing is a really cool effect that can add a little bit more depth and light play and it's done by using a flat brush and putting a very minimal amount of paint on the end of your brush. Here I'm adding a lighter color to the edges of certain areas to create more contrast, depth, and overall visual appeal.
Okay, now that our Skaven Storm Fiend mini is finally finished, we can move on to creating his little diorama world. Here are just a few of the things that I'm going to be using to help me create my diorama world. Most of this stuff can be found at your local hobby store, and the rest can be found online or just lying around your house. Old electronic pieces can be used for post-apocalyptic buildings or sci-fi settings. Bottle caps can be used for sewer tops. Old toy pieces can be used for pretty much anything. The list goes on and on. It's up to you how creative you want to get with your diorama. I'm going to be using this PVC frame that I found for the enclosure for our diorama. I spray painted it flat black. All right, everyone, sit back and enjoy this diorama montage. All right, everybody, before we show you the finished product, Maestro has something he wants to share. In an effort to help participate with the show a little bit more, Maestro offered to build and paint his very own Skaven Storm Fiend, didn't you? I did, I did indeed. It's beautiful. Now I know that deep down inside, Maestro is a talented and artistic person, and I'm really excited to see what he came up with. I haven't seen it yet, but I know it's gonna be good. Isn't it? Uh-huh. Real good. All right, well, uh, let's take a look. Oh, man, I gave you 50 bucks because you said you wanted to work with your own supplies. What'd you do with my money? Well, I went and got supplies. Uh, I got some bourbon supplies. Uh, look, man, I don't need all that fancy paint and paintbrushes to create some goofy little rat man. I'm an artist and I need to get loose and dip into the groove. That's how I work. Get off my back. Okay, so 
even if you were loose and uh, in that artistic mindset. How is it that this is what you came up with? This looks like you did it in five minutes because you forgot that you were supposed to help out with the show. First of all, it took me about 25 minutes and I don't know if you've heard of a man by the name of Picasso, but he was known as the king of abstract, which is exactly what this is. So before you insult me, maybe you should learn some art history. And I don't need mine to look like yours. I want it to be different, better, like me. Yeah, uh-huh. I hear what you're saying. Uh, so first of all, it's not Picasso. I think his name is Picasso. And uh, I'm pretty sure he never built anything that looked as hideous as what you have shown us here today. That's rude. Very rude. Really, really disappointed, man. I thought you were actually gonna help this time. I did help. Who is that? Oh, that is probably the pizza man. Uh, that's some of the supply money. Would you like some pepperoni pizza? Nope. I'm good. Cosmic Brothers united by the endless forces of the universe. Can you please get out of my studio before I kill you? Gladly. Thanks, bud. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that you learned something. I know that my main takeaway from this episode would probably be that I would spend a little bit more time picking my color scheme for my Skaven. I think that some of my color tones are a little bit similar, and I would have liked for a little bit more contrast. But all in all, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Like I said before, this is my first time ever, and I know that if I continue to do it more, I'm only going to get better at it. And I'm almost positive that you'll have the exact same results if you do the same. So thank you so much for watching Castle Tree TV. We love doing the show and we couldn't do it without you. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Because we have some really cool episodes coming up that I know you're going to want to see. Okay, now let's go look at the finished results of our Skaven Storm Fiend and his little diorama world. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time on Castle Tree TV.
create and review. We create and review fantasy for you, for you, for you, for you.